Ooh, skip. 100. Hmm. 100. You, you don't believe it. 100. You don't really believe that. Just the way I did about like to do mm -hmm. it. How much credit would you have given them when they won? When they beat New Orleans, That's you gave them the credit. That's not the question. No. How he much does he deserve? 95%. Okay. Because he's the GOAT. P.J. Walker. Mm -hmm. P.J. Walker. Let me get P.J. Walker. P.J. Mm -hmm. Walker. P.J. Walker. That's the same P.J. Walker mm -hmm. that was undrafted out of Temple. That's that was true. waved by the Colts. Yep. That led the XFL in passing, and passing yards and uh -huh. touchdowns. Wait, that does Brady Walker. play defense now? That P.J. No. Uh -huh. He don't play defense. Uh -huh. He got three points. Huh. Does, 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 does uh, Devin White play offense? No. He can't give me more than three points? Mm. One touchdown in his last two games. Mm. All you did was come out here last year and pom pom. He's leading the league in passing yards. He He's was. leading the league in touchdowns. He was. That was last year. Yep. Now let's talk about this year. Mm -hmm. And even this year, his peers mm. voted him number one. Number one overall. Pro Football Focus graded him number one overall. What are they grading him right now? Uh, I don't what know. What would his peers vote him right now? Mm. So let's talk about that. Do you, Skip, I don't know if you noticed this, that the Bucks have the third fewest offensive touchdowns this season. Mm -hmm. The Broncos are number one. I saw them up close and personal. Mm -hmm. The Steelers are number two. Mm -hmm. That's with Cody Pickett. I mean, excuse me, with Pickett mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Richard Trubisky. Yep. And the GOAT. Mm -hmm. The GOAT's on this list with the Panthers, Baker Mayfield, P.J. Walker, and the Bears, mm -hmm. Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. That's so. Look at those guys. He's on that list. Mm -hmm. He's on that list with them. Hurt. Here's Brady, Tom Brady. This is Tom Brady. No de people at home. This is not the defense. Tom Brady, first nine drives. Punt, 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 punt. Halftime. Punt, turnover on downs. Punt, field goal. Mm. What the defense got to do with that? Mm. But let me tell you who's going to get the blame. Mm. Byron Leftwich, they're about to come for you. Mm. Todd Bowles, they're about to come for you. Mm. Defense, they're about to come for you. Mm. They're always going to place the blame on somebody else mm. when you lose other than Tom Brady. But mm. when they win, Byron Leftwich ain't getting no credit. Mm. Todd Bowles don't get no credit. The defense doesn't get any credit. Tom Brady, did you see that throw? Mm. He wills them to win. They won because of Tom. Mm. But when they lose, they lose because of everybody else. Mm. How is that fair? How is that realistic? You and I both know. Skip, he was awful. The Bucks are now 26th in third down uh, uh, com uh, conversion weight. 2 of 12 last uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. 4 of 14. So in the last two games, he's 6 of 26. Mm. What does the defense have to do with that? Mm. What does the defense have to do with that? Absolutely nothing. So, Skip, hold on. I know good and well P.J. Walker didn't have a 74 QBR and Tom Brady had a 56. I knew mm. that didn't happen. Mm. So 13-point favorites. Mm. Tom Brady deserves 95% of the blame mm. because if he had won, you'd have gave him 100% of the credit, mm. just like he did against New Orleans. That one throw. Did you see that throw to Julio Jones against your Cowboys? Did you see it? Yeah. I, what did you see yesterday? Wait, where is Julio Jones? Uh, oh, Whatever oh, happened to him? Now you, That's now, a good question. Now you begging I'm for glad Julio. you brought him now up. Now you begging for Julio. Yeah. Now you begging for Gronk. Mm. You want Gronk to come out of retirement, risk further injury to his body mm. to save Tom Brady. Yep, I've no. been saying it for months. No, it's Tom Brady. Yep. Hold on. If he the GOAT, save himself. Mm. Why you always want all these players? Mm. He got everybody. Was Chris Godwin there yesterday? Mm. Mike Evans? No, that's, that's, that. th th those are good questions because I'm not sure the answer is yes to any of those questions. The question you need to ask yourself, what's going on number 12? Mm. That's the question you need to ask. And trust me, mm. around the league, everybody is asking those same questions. Are they? Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Tell me when you're finished. Take off. Is that it? Mm -hmm. I want you to get it all out there. And I need you to conclude for me that it is time for Tom Brady to go home. Skip. No? Skip. Let's deal with yesterday. He okay. stunk. Okay. Let's deal with this year. In seven games, he's okay. been awful. Let's deal with Thursday night against Baltimore. Is it time for Blaine Gabbert to try to take it up a notch? Yeah. Blaine see, Gabbert. See, that's what you do. You still won't address the issue. That uh, wasn't what Jen asked. I'm about Answer to address it and address it and address it Okay, we'll go ahead and more. address that. Don't try, to, don't try to move the goalpost. Don't try to say it's time for him to go home. Say it's time for Blaine Gabbert. Okay. Talk about yesterday. All right, I'm going to talk about a week ago because the Brady-led Buccaneers were coming off a debacle of a disaster of a nightmare of a game, a loss at Pittsburgh when they were down three-fourths of their secondary and T.J. Watt. Mm -hmm. And they were going to bounce back at Carolina against a team that just shipped Christian McCaffrey all the way across the country to San Francisco. Having a yard sale yeah. with their team. Yeah, well, the, the, on offense they are, but not on defense. Help me out. Have they given up anybody on defense? Are they going to give up anybody on defense? Help me out. You're know. in the Hall of Fame. I'm not. Help me out. Are they going to give up anybody on defense? We don't know They yet. say, no, we're going to hang on. They've been very adamant.
government. We're going to keep Brian Burns. We're going to keep Derek Brown. We're going to keep J.C. Horn. We're going to keep Chin. We're going to keep all of our studs on defense. And by the way, that defense very quietly has played pretty well this year because Pro Football Focus going into yesterday – ranked the Carolina defense the 11th best in the league. That's that's decent. They, they can compete. They've been competing all year long. And he gags it. He did everything but catch it. He let the ball sort of play him. And I'm sure it hung up there for what seemed like <laughs> 10 minutes in the air. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to do it for us. I don't got it. Okay. And what did Mike Evans say after the game? He said, you know, a lot of players lose games, but he says – Here's the quote. No one plays the sole reason you lose, but that was definitely the biggest reason we lost. I seen the life go out of us. It took me a while to get back to playing. It's a team that is teetering, and all of a sudden, its best receiver gags the first big throw of the game, the second pass that should have been completed for a 7 nothing touchdown, and obviously the home team is wondering, are are we fire sailing everybody on offense? What's left on offense? We still have our defense, but we don't have anybody on offense that we can trust. We're down to our third string quarterback. What would have happened yesterday if Mike Evans had just simply hung on and scored? We don't know. Number 12 starting to lose some confidence. And he's looking at his offensive line and what happened to Luke Gattike yesterday. I've been talking about him all year. The rookies playing left guard. He got yanked from the game twice. They put him back in, and then they took him out again. They yanked him for the third string left guard, and they're down to nothing. They are not being able to, A, defend and protect Tom Brady, or B, run the ball at all. Help me out. What did they have yesterday? Oh, 46 yards rushing. Could you recognize Leonard Fournette yesterday? You should be able to run on the Panthers. They couldn't run a lick on the Panthers yesterday. Yeah, outside I'm, of that first game, how did Leonard Fournette look running the football? Okay, well, that's the point. And if we could go to the flashpoint of this game that showed you what was about to happen, this is 7.05 left in the third quarter. It's still a 7 to nothing game, and they get two cracks on third and one and fourth and one. You, you can't win a game at Carolina rushing for 46 yards when you can't get one yard on third and one and one yard on fourth and one. It's just hard to have do. Have we never seen Tom have – we, have we not seen Tom Brady – win games when they can't run the football. I remember they only had, what, five carries against Atlanta down 20, 28 to 3. Yeah, and, and now speaking of running the football, people are running all over Todd Bowles' defense, and I never thought I would see the day. I and agree. it does it <clears throat> bring into question, I'm the biggest Todd Bowles fan you can find. I have called him the best defensive mind in the game, even a little bit above Belichick. That's how much I believe in him and what he has done, certainly – for the Tampa Bay defense over the last couple of years. But when you elevate him to head coach, all of a sudden you you dilute his duties. Where Blame you that on Brady. Brady wanted, Brady wanted Bruce Arians out. Okay. All right. That's he fine. He got what okay, he wanted. I'll, I'll give you that. He got what he wanted. He wanted Todd Bowles. And all of a sudden Todd Bowles is not being able to spend his total time revamping a defense that needs to be revamped. Skill. That defense keep living, living on the Super Bowl. Okay, they do. And what they about talk, last, last okay, year? Okay, all right. And the, this year it carried over. Okay, the problem yesterday was they're down Logan Ryan, who was a big addition to the yeah. defense, and he's got, I, I think it's some kind of fracture in his foot, and yeah. I think he might be gone for the year. Possibly. And they were down Carlton Davis yesterday. He didn't even dress. So he was out. And then they were down their third corner, who's a very good corner, and Sean Murphy Bunting. So you're down three key players in your secondary going into this game, which is why we saw P.J. Walker start to have some success. He didn't exactly throw a party yesterday, but but he when he needed to make throws, if we could see his touchdown passes, if, if the, the first one goes to D.J. Moore for 20 yards. It was a great throw, and it was a good catch, and he's a really good receiver, right. as we all know. The, the problem is that all of a sudden – Okay, that was that one. Okay, so so now you're down 21 to 3 and that's it. Now let's look speaking of rush defense. The the Buccaneers got run over again. That's 173 yards rushing yesterday. They can't stop anybody from running the football, which used to be their calling card. You could not run on the Buccaneers. Skip. Is that Brady's fault? Skip. Is that Brady's fault? No, no. But yesterday you were 2 or 12. 
You was one for three. Terrible. Three. You was one. For, I, but, I got but, it. Okay, I get it. You want to show the Buccaneers how they ran. Well, show, show Brady and some of those skip passes. Okay. I thought he was in the rock I, skipping I'm, I'm contest. A, I'm about to do well, it. Well, do okay. that, please he, do. Here, here's what's happening right now. Obviously, there's no Gronkowski. I'm still holding out hope. I've said that by November 1st, he's going to come back. Let's see if he comes back. Tom Brady recruited Julio Jones to be his new deep threat. And Julio's, first he had a hamstring, and now I think it's his knee. But I saw one flash against Dallas. He yeah. caught a 48-yarder. And to your credit, you predicted you just can't trust his health going forward. Well, you didn't even you didn't think it'd be this bad because now we're, we're seven games right. in, and I've seen one flash of Julio for seven games. And they say they're playing the long game that they hope that they'll have him for the backside of the schedule. And by the way, I remind you, we still have 10 more games in the regular season. So maybe he will rise and shine. But not only do you not have Gronk, but you lost Cameron Brait. And it sounds fairly serious, and I don't know for how long you're not going to have Cameron Brait. So you're down to throwing to a rookie tight end named Cade Otten. Now, do you have anybody underneath who can do Edelman Amendola? They tried to make Scotty Miller that guy, and he's just not. Brady threw him two balls yesterday. He got a grand total of six yards, two for six. And yet against New Orleans in the game at New Orleans that they, run, they won, they were forced into throwing Scotty Miller the most targets in the game as their pure wide receiver, eight targets in the but, game. But he's not a slot. Okay, he's not a slot. I don't know what he is, but he doesn't help. So I ask you, where is Gio Bernard? Because he used to be one of Tom's favorites, especially right. down on the goal line. He would work a little option. Time. Okay, he's on IR. Where's my little man from Vanderbilt, Keyshawn Vaughn, who can flat fly? He, he's out there, he dresses, but they don't let him see the light of play except on special teams. I would like to see him get some touches because he's one of your few lightning bolts that you have on, on the offense because I'm looking more and more, when you take away A.B., you, you have no deep threat at all. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to say this because I'm watching closely. Chris Godwin does not look the same to me. He's coming off an ACL. Y'all rushed him he, back. He doesn't appear to have the burst he used to have. He, had, he used to have sort of a underrated, underestimated burst in and out of his breaks. He never was a deep threat, no. but but just on on just mid-range routes, he could come out of his break. He's not separating the way he used to, and, and Brady will force some balls to him, but it, it, it doesn't look the same. So it starts to look like Mike Evans or bust. Well, Mike Evans occasionally can fool you and run by you, but what, what do you think he runs the 40 in now? Four, six, or seven, something <laughs> like that? He's six feet, five inches tall. Right. So all of a sudden, I'm showing you that they don't have any deep threat at all. And so I think defenses are starting to creep up and up and up and just sitting on any underneath route because you can, because there's no threat here. There, there's nothing. There's obviously n nothing like a Tyreek. There, there's nothing like a Jalen Waddle. There's nobody who threatens the defense deep. Your quarterback is 45 years of age. Okay. In order for you to get downfield, that means mm -hmm. you have to hold up. You mm -hmm. just said your offensive line is suspect. It is. Although he's only been sacked 10 times, which is the second he, fewest he, in all he, the football. He, he just throws the ball away. Okay, so you ask for the flashpoint of the game. These are the three plays. This reminded me of Aaron Rodgers in the NFC Championship game at Green Bay mm -hmm. two years ago against Tom Brady. They did get it first and goal at the eight. Yeah, yeah. This is in the fourth, early in the fourth quarter, and it's a 14 to nothing game. So you'd say, okay, you still you got a shot here. here. He, he threw that away because Godwin was so covered at the. There are three Panthers around Godwin, mm -hmm. and he just said, what's the Cardinal sin a quarterback does in the red? You cannot throw a red zone interception. You can't just give them. Right. You can't come away with no points. So the last one's just a flat out. I got nothing. I'm scrambling. I can't run. I'm just going to throw it in the dirt. Right. And I'm going to take the three because right. that's all we got. Yeah. But he's looking for either Evans or Godwin for the most part. And if they don't immediately separate, he's just going to get rid of the football. Yep. Okay, so there you go. Those are the – remember Aaron Rodgers on first goal of the eight. He's forcing balls. One was just an air mail, but, but he's forcing the ball to Devontae mm -hmm. twice at the goal line when he was covered. Well, he risked getting it picked on both of those. Skip, and when you get older, had check it from a guy that played in the NFL yep. and got old, you don't want to take those hits. Tom yep. Brady doesn't want to take those hits. But guess what? Skip, their offense is predicated on that short stuff. It is. So when you're down at the eight-yard line, where the hell are you going? I ain't worried about nobody going deep. Because okay. that's not your offense, and you can't go deep because you run out of the end zone. So, Skip, I can just I can just rush for, drop back in coverage, and guess what? Tom Brady gonna skip it or throw it out of bounds. Because I'm not worried about him running. Okay. I'm not worried about him racing me to a pylon. All right. So, what was this offense known for? What was the New England offense known for? 
bing, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, right? Yeah. Well, he had no booms yesterday because he didn't complete a pass for over 20 yards. Yeah. Because the, the, there's, we showed you one that should have been for whatever that was, 65, 65 yards. But in, in general, he, he doesn't trust anybody to separate deep, deeper. So the, the, the dink and dunk that, that he used to just pick you to pieces with is not there because he's not even getting people to separate quickly underneath. So I'm just saying, Lenny Fournette, he, he's looking like he's beat up. And by the way, Mike Evans was limping much of the game. He doesn't look right well, to look me. Like you tweaked your ankle on yeah, that third on that one, that yeah, one down like there. You your ankle. Okay, so I, man, it, the, they are up against it, but they're going to have to really revamp this thing on the fly. They're going to have to try Keyshawn Vaughn, or they're going to have to do something different on offense because it's not working. I don't, I don't know, maybe I heard it, maybe the people at home heard it. How much blame did Brady get? Mm. From me? Yeah. I'll give him half the blame, 50%. <laughs> well, there is this thing called defense that gave up 173 yards rushing and, and made P.J. Walker look like a hero. I just, I, all I know is what you said about Dak opening day when he scored three points. Mm -hmm. I know what you said. Mm -hmm. I can imagine what you would have said had Josh Allen scored mm -hmm. three points or Patrick Mahomes scored three points. You would not have mm -hmm. said 50%. I can assure you of that. Mm. Well, how do you know that? I you know don't that. know that. Because I know your history. Oh, okay. Well, I know your history of Brady hate, and, <laughs> and you're going to give him 100% of the blame. If they lose, it's all on Tom Brady. Oh, this is what I know. And this you're not going to give him any credit if they win. Two of 12 on third down, yep. one of three on third down. The man threw the ball 50 times mm -hmm. and didn't have 300 yards. You know mm -hmm. why? Because mm -hmm. he's dinking and dunking. Mm -hmm. Now, in the championship game, I've never seen somebody pick up third down after third down, third and ten, third and ten. You key, 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 mm -hmm. you rave it. Well, well why, why shouldn't I? Have you ever seen anybody do that before? Okay. Just, Have you ever? And you give him no credit. Just like At you, Kansas City uh, in, the, in the cold okay. against Mahomes, okay. he converts three straight third and tens in overtime, and you give him no credit. I need you to be, oh. I need you to be just as disappointed mm -hmm. in him as yeah. you was excited for him when he did that. Okay. He that but you're not. Well, again, if he had a defense that could half yeah. carry him, yeah. they deserve half the blame. Yeah, when they went to that Super Bowl run, you didn't mention the defense. Mm -hmm. All you talked about was Tom Brady. I've Tom Brady. About the defense. Guess what? Guess what, Skip Bayless? He's turning back into the Suckaneers. Mm. Tom Brady's turning back into the Suckaneers. Mm. That's what he's done. And you're happy because you <laughs> tried to send him home for six straight years. I'm not happy. Are you ready to send I, him home? No. I need you to go on record. I know. I went on record b b while Aaron Rodgers was winning MVPs, the two MVPs. I said, he's a playoff choker. I just sat right over here, and I would not move off that opinion. And guess what? He backed me right up in two straight playoffs with the number one seed. He choked his guts out. So I need to know, what is he now? Three. Is he washed? You keep talking about, oh, Carlton Davis was out, and this was out. Pittsburgh was without five of their top mm -hmm. players and one of the two best defensive players in all of football. Yep. And they did a number on him. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me Tampa Bay can do, couldn't do He couldn't score more than three. Mm -hmm. Skip, give me 10. Mm -hmm. Give me 10 points. Mm -hmm. Is three. he washed? Three. Is he washed? He Shannon won't answer Shannon that question I because Shannon's afraid of him. Shannon's still afraid of Tom three Brady. Points. Shannon's still a three. But okay. I do know three the Bucs are well on a point. very yeah. short week. Ooh, yeah. I got to jump in here, gentlemen. You know, old Bucks people can't focus on the Ravens short week. This Kill. Thursday. We'll Woo. see. Yeah, it's a quick turn for them. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.